So I kind of, um, as I said with, with mirth, <laughs> presented this as a recipe. So the key ingredients for this recipe for divinity living are unlimited source energy, the faith the size of a mustard seed, and equal measures of love, grace, and forgiveness. So I'm going to kind of talk about each of those elements, but probably not in that order. Next, I want to talk about faith. Uh, faith was a tough one for me, and I didn't realize how easy it was to have faith. And literally, you need faith the size of a mustard seed. But what you don't realize, maybe, <clears throat> is what you need a large amount of is surrender. It's the surrender that's the hard part of getting us to that place of faith. And another kind of aha moment for me was um, actually after my children were grown, but I got to thinking about this game, this computer game that they have called The Sims. Is anybody familiar with The Sims game? If you're not familiar with The Sims game, what it is is the person who is playing The Sims is the creator of this little world. And they see houses with no roofs on them. So they can build the houses and they can manipulate the people around the houses. And they can decide what clothes the people are going to wear, what, um, what jobs they're going to have when they go to the bathroom. I mean, it's like this kind of funny thing. And so I saw this, um, I saw this, aha moment or this similarity with our higher selves being up there knowing like what we're supposed to do what our path is and we're the little sims like in our houses and in our jobs and stuff and it's those moments when we look up and we realize that <coughs> we can connect with the higher knowing we don't have to just be you know on autopilot it's those moments when we connect. It's when we can feel connected to that higher knowing, that higher guidance, that we really get to live in the flow and we really get to live. So that's the part of the surrender, is to basically realize there's this higher plan, there's this higher knowing, there's a, a as Unity says, there's a goodness to everything there's, you know, the judgment comes in from our human selves, but there isn't really good and bad, there just is. We kind of apply these labels to it. So um, when we can jump out of the story of I'm this, I'm that, he's good, he's bad, you know, my mother did this to me, my father did that to me, and, and realize that we're on this spiritual journey and there is a higher purpose and it, that's where the faith comes in, just to surrender and know that there is a higher purpose. Um, and that's when we can align ourselves to the higher vision, the higher love, the higher good. And it's also realizing that everything isn't about us. Sometimes it's somebody else's turn. And sometimes, you know, sometimes we're there as a pivotal uh, piece for someone else. It's not just, you know, it's not just our goodness and our um, highest, but it's the overall highest. So I wanted to tell a little um, kind of parallel of two lives and to kind of illustrate this, this knowing or this faith I have that there is a higher plan. <clears throat> so, um, I uh, actually have a, a waking memory of myself in another lifetime as some sort of shaman, and I believe this is why I am able to do the healing that I do, because I just know what to do. And um, I had a seer, a mystic, a, a psychic person, tell me that um, the way that she saw this lifetime was that as a child, the um, medicine woman in the tribe recognized my gift and actually stepped aside and let me as this you know native person be the medicine man 
And um, so then I think of this lifetime, right? And I have this gift I was born with. And as a child, I uh, basically did a healing and um, again, told by a psychic, I scared my dad to death. Um, and I was told to shut it down. And so when, when this all, like kind of all this, these pieces came to me, I thought how, like first of all, how, how ironic, but then how blessed because here's one life where the gift is embraced, right? So then why not come in for another lifetime where the gift is rejected, the gift is tamped down, and see if you can get to that place where you remember the gift. So what is there in this lifetime that possibly is the opposite of another lifetime? Try to find those aha moments for yourself of what it is that your soul is seeking in this lifetime, and it can open, uh, it can open doors. So forgive yourself, forgive others for anything that you feel has been placed upon you because you can release it in any moment. That is your now power. Um, I like to think of mistakes as mistakes, as in the film industry. You've made a, you made a mistake, so you got another try, try it again. And I, I feel true mistakes are when you've done something in the past and you know it's hurt someone and you choose to do it again. That's a mistake. But otherwise, they're just mistakes. So try again. <clears throat> So what is grace? For me, it's um, insight. It's uh, that voice in the grocery store that says, you forgot the milk. Um, it's that thing that happened to some people on 9-11 that told them to stay home. It's the driver that's in front of us that's going really slow that perhaps prevented us from something down the road that would have been bad for us. Uh, another kind of aha moment for me, and really the first time that I feel uh, grace kind of uh, blessed me fully, was um, in, I think, 2012. Um, I think it was 2012. Joe and I went to Sedona. <clears throat> I always wanted to go to Sedona. And I just had this knowing that something spiritual was going to happen there. Why not, right? It's like the spiritual place. So um, when we go on vacation, we stay at RCI Properties, which is a timeshare thing. And we, um, we switch our place here, and we get places there. So, so we, ha we had a timeshare with a full kitchen, so we planned on doing a lot of our meals ourselves to save money. And um, uh, we went to the grocery store, and when we're on vacation, I like to treat myself to Starbucks Frappuccinos, which are very fattening <laughs> and very expensive compared to just making your own coffee. So I went looking for the Frappuccinos, and I couldn't find them. So I went up to a clerk, and I said, so I don't know if you have these things here, but, you know, this is what they are. And he says, oh, yeah, they're in the beer aisle. So I said to Joe, will you get the rest of the stuff? I'm going to go get the Frappuccinos. So I go to the Frappuccinos, the, you know, across from the beer. Just as I'm reaching for the Frappuccino, a fellow comes in the aisle. He has army fatigues on or some kind of fatigues on. His face is bloody. He's staggering toward the beer. In my head, I hear, or I know, because I don't always hear things, I just have a knowing. Talk to him. I say, hi, how are you doing? He goes, well, I'm good now that I'm talking to you. I said, what's your name? He says, Gary. He says, what's your name, beautiful? And I say, Christy. 
So I go and I start talking to him. Um, there's a part of me that's almost like sitting on my shoulder. The me, right? The me that's, you know, kind of saying, what are you doing? And then there's the voice coming through me, talking to him, ministering to him, really. And um, I, I start, as I said, I started talking to him. I said to him, um, try not to be in judgment. I hope you're not getting more beer. And he just looked at me. And I said, well, you're kind of messed up. You shouldn't be driving like that. He goes, oh, I, I would never drive this messed up. Um, <laughs> I'm walking. And I said, well, you still need to be careful because you could fall into traffic. And he started to cry. And he said, oh my God, you are an angel sent to me by God. He said, this is a spiritual experience. And as, I, as he said that, little Christy over here says, oh my gosh, this is my spiritual experience. And um, it kind of went on from there. It was, you know, a few minutes. Um, he basically said, I can't believe you're even talking to me, let alone, he said, you, you genuinely care about me. And I said, of course I care about you. You're a human being, you're divine, or you know, whatever I said. As we were having that little mini conversation, I happened to turn and look down the aisle, and an elderly couple was coming into the aisle, and when they saw us, they turned around and left. And it illustrated to me that he was probably living an invisible life. Um, he had problems, he was not desirable to look at, but he was a person. And I knew his name and he knew my name. Um, basically, he had been the uh, squadron leader for, um, I don't know what you call it, he was a um, Marine. He had a, a squadron of guys, a platoon of guys. Many of them had died. He was carrying that burden. I apologized to him for what he had been through and told him he didn't need to carry it anymore. Um, so that was grace, that was grace. And um, the cool part of the story is that um, I think it was our next visit to Sedona, in, this was like in March or something, and the next one was in September. We had gone to another timeshare, we didn't have internet, we went to the grocery store to use the Starbucks internet, and just as I looked up, Gary was leaving the store in a store uniform. So, Grace, we have the ability to change not only ourselves, but to change other people, just by being love and being in service. <clears throat>
Or maybe there's someone who's an understudy who hasn't had the experience and the years of practice of everyone else. Yet when they play, they're buoyed by everybody else. Our power is in the now. It's in recognizing our ability. I hope that this gives you some um, things to think about and some things to employ that make your life easier to live uh, because you are divine.